hello friends welcome back to my youtube channel today in this video we will know about the arcing of swell and we will also see the arrangement and the results of the Zaghi trapdoor experiment before describing you about the arcing of the swell first i would like to explain the meaning of the old eld what does the elding means elding means simply the increase in the deformation due to the constant stress or the constant load applied to the swell mass now let us understand about the arcing of the swell. Arcing of the swell is the phenomenon in which a moving or elding swell mass will transfer its pressure to the comparatively non-elding or non-moving swell mass. In the portion AB of the swell mass, a constant stress Q is acting. Due to this constant stress, a deformation is caused which is known as elding. This constant stress will cause the movement of the of this swell mass due to which a base, base of this swell mass is shifted by a certain distance as shown in this figure and in order to avoid such a movement a shear resistance will be developed between the elding and the non-elding swell mass and this shear resistance is responsible for the decrease in the stress in the elding zone and increase in the stress of the non-elding zone which will be later discussed in the Teazagi trapdoor experiment here the slip surface is curved in nature which will make an angle 45 degree plus 5 by 2 with the horizontal where the phi is angle of internal friction but for our simplicity the slip surface is assumed to be vertical in nature now let us consider a small strip in this elding portion of this swell mass and the thickness of this strip be dz and this strip be located at distance z from the upper portion of the swell mass and the total vertical stress acting on the upper portion of the swell mass be sigma z which is equal to the gamma z plus q where q is the uniform surcharge acting at ab and the total vertical stress acting at the down portion of this strip B sigma z plus D sigma z where D sigma z is the vertical stress due to the depth of the strip dz and to avoid the movement of this strip downward or shear resistance is shear resistance is developed at the two side in the upward direction and sigma x be the horizontal stress acting in this strip and dw be the weight of this strip which is acting downward now let us see this strip separately let the width of this strip be denoted by b and let us consider the dimension of this portion b1 one. one unit and the sigma z is acting on the area b into one and the shear stress Yes, is acting on the area 1 into dz into 1. Now, in this strip, we will consider the vertical equilibrium. This means the total downward force must be equal to the upward force. The downward force is the weight of the strip dw and the vertical stress sigma z multiplied by the area on which this stress is acting, i.e. b into 1, plus sigma z into b into 1. And this will be equal to the upward force. Here, the upward force is sigma z plus d sigma z times the area on which it is acting that is b into 1 and the 2s yes and yes 2s is acting on the area dz times 1 2s is acting on the area dz times 1 now we know that weight is equal to gamma multiplied by the volume and so the weight of the strip dw will be equal to the gamma into db where volume of this strip is b times dz into 1 and thus the dw will be gamma times b dz and we know that the shear stress yes is equal to c plus 10 phi times sigma x where c is the cohesion phi is the angle of internal friction and sigma x is the horizontal stress we know that from the definition of the coefficient of the lateral earth pressure as described in the previous video k is equal to sigma x by sigma z or sigma b from here we will get sigma x is equal to k times sigma z and substituting in this sigma x we will get s is equal to c plus k times sigma z 10 phi and we will substituting this equation 2 in equation 1 we will get dw is equal to gamma times b dz plus b sigma z is equal to b sigma z plus b times b sigma z is equal to 2 into s is equal to c plus k times sigma z 10 phi into dz and we will get b times d sigma z is equal to gamma into b times dz minus 2c 
times dz minus 2 into k into sigma z into 10 by times dz. Now if we divide the both side by p times dz we will get d sigma z by dz is equal to gamma minus 2c by b minus 2k sigma z 10 by b. If we integrate this equation using the boundary condition. The, here the boundary condition is when this depth is 0 when z is equal to 0 the stress vertical stress acting on this portion of the soil mass will be equal to the q at z is equal to 0 the stress acting on the soil mass is q and if we use this boundary condition and integrate this equation we will get the expression for the vertical stress which is b times gamma minus 2c by b upon 2k into 10 by bracket 1 minus e co power minus 2k z by b dot 10 by plus q e co power minus 2k z by b dot 10 by this is the expression for the vertical stress in the yielding portion of the soil mass at depth z from the top of the surface now let us see the arrangement of the trapdoor experiment it consists of the fixed plate on the two sides and between this plate it consists of a trapdoor. Let it condense the sand up to the height h. Initially when there was no any movement of the trapdoor, the vertical stress acting on the trapdoor and the fixed plate was same and that was equal to the gamma h. And this trapdoor is fitted with the waking scale. When this trapdoor is allowed to move slightly downward in the vertical direction, then it was found that the pressure on this trapdoor considerably decreases and that the pressure on the adjoint sand will increases. This is because the soil below the arc AEV will fall down in the trapdoor and the pressure on the trapdoor is only due to this soil mass in the prism AEB. And for the equilibrium of this Elding and non elding portion in shear resistance will act in the upper direction in the elding soil mass and to neutralize it in non elding soil mass the direction of the shear resistance will be in the downward direction which is indicated by the red arrow and due to this shear resistance acting in the downward direction the pressure on the fixed plate will increases initially the pressure was same that was equal to the gamma h after the movement of the trapdoor in the downward direction the pressure in the trapdoor will decreases as indicated by this figure and the adjoint soil mass will increases due to the shear resistance and this effect of shear resistance is seen only up to the certain distance as we know that the shearing resistance is inversely proportional to the area this shearing resistance will goes on decreasing as the area of the sand resisting this shear stress increases. This means the vertical stress acting on this fixed plate will goes on decreasing and it was found that it decreases in the form of the curve as indicated by the figure. And this is the final pressure. After the certain span of the non yielding sand, the pressure will be same as that of the initial because the shearing resistance yes, will be completely resisted by the sand up to this portion. Here will be no effect, it was same as that of the initial. And this will be our final pressure curve as it was obtained experimentally by the Terzaghi. And the pressure become constant after the small movement or the further movement will not affect the pressure in the trapdoor experiment because only the falling mass of the soil prism below AEB will contribute to the pressure in the trapdoor. And this was our Tazagi trapdoor experiment. Thank you guys. See you soon.